Isn't it the best when you take your car in from the dealership and then you get the dreaded call? Not that it's gonna be super expensive, but they crashed it. <laughs> What's going on, everybody? My name is Mecca. This is Driven Hard, and uh, behind me is my 2019. I'll get my ugly mud out of the way. My 2019 Range Rover Sport. And um, hey, if you're brand new to the channel, nice to meet you. Hit me up in the comments if you enjoy these videos. Consider subscribing, and everybody, please do me a favor: hook a brother up with a like. I'd appreciate that. But let's kind of get into it. I am sitting outside. It is freezing today. Um, it's raining. We're about to leave for our Land Rover, our, my first Land Rover experience in Canada. We're leaving tomorrow up to Kamloops to hit up Land Rover of Kelowna, and uh, they are hosting Land Rover Canada. So I'm beyond stoked for that. Car is ready to go. I got my winter tires on her. She is ready to rip up the Coquihalla and, uh, and some mud, snow, grass, whatever they throw at us. Um, but hey, I wanted to do video two of two um, for my last under factory warranty service appointment. So um, card and description, if you missed part one of this video, I'm talking about my service experience, but this is the final one under a factory warranty. And um, yeah, so let's get, dive into it. So first things first, the app on the phone is stopped working in, to turn the car on. It wouldn't do that. It would lock, unlock everything else. Uh, simple software upgrade. Land Rover updates, Apple Android have to update. So that keeps happening. Sometimes they get out of sync. Uh, Land Rover did their thing. It was super, super easy for them to fix. Then clicking noises. So um, noises, yeah, 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 they bug me. Do they bug you? Let me know in the comments if noises, weird noises bug you. I was having some clicking noises. And if you remember, I was pulling some rocks from underneath my car from on the skid plates. I was pulling them out when I was cleaning it one day. Guys, look at that. And uh, I guess there was a lot more in there because they pulled down all the skid plates and a ton of debris fell out. And so, um, anyways, and it's been a little raining and whatnot, so I haven't really heard a lot of the noises yet, but uh, like I said, I'm gonna be driving her uh, a few hundred kilometers over the next few days, so I'm definitely gonna see if there are some noises. They did say engine un under trays removed and heavy amounts of rock, heavy amounts of rock and sediment trapped between the trays and shielding removed. Under trays have also sustained impact <laughs> and parts of rear tray were bent. Bent components removed and dampener pads reinstalled. <gasps> Oops. Um, but they, they hooked the brother up and they didn't charge me for any of that. So really big shout out to Jaguar Land Rover of Vancouver. I appreciate you guys over there doing what you can to, to keep a brother and his wife together, if you know what I mean, right? And, um, okay, cool. Now, the one thing that they couldn't do is um, my fuel system management problem. So the car's tuned. Oh, no, big deal. Um, so I was having some issues. I'll throw a video up of it. See what's going on there. Uh, it basically seemed like it was bouncing off rev limiter. And what happened is I wasn't getting any lights or codes or anything like that, but they were stored hidden codes of the fault. And it had to do with the fuel system. And it, this, it was fuel system sensors, um, both fuel pumps, um, there was a code for that and something else, fuel management, I can't remember. Um, but anyways, this is one of the reasons they ended up having the uh, Range Rover for about two and a half, almost three weeks, is the manager was on holiday and the tech, as soon as they saw it was coded, um, they could not keep working in the car until they had authorization from the manager who happened to leave just before I left the car. So I had to wait a week for them to have authorization to do anything. Um, anyways, so he said no, which I was totally okay with because I do have an extended warranty. We're gonna get that taken care of. Um, it is an intermittent thing. So I've had all of the codes completely cleared and removed. Um, so we'll see if it does pop up again. If it does, I'll just deal with it then. And, uh, and we'll go from there. But I'm not too concerned because like I said, it's something that was only, it's only ever happened twice uh, in the 80,000 kilometers that I've had it. So I don't know, we'll see, not too, too worried. Okay, brakes squealing a little bit when I drive past the trees. 
um, checked and reported. Yeah, that's just because the new pads that JLR is using are complete trash, guys. Do not, do not have, I got the super chart or the, the larger Brembos. Don't, don't use the Brembos or don't use the pads that Land Rover wants you to use right now. Um, they're just, they're shit pads. Excuse my French. Um, these were changed, what, a month and a half ago? I'm down to 20%, haven't even been driving that much. They're stupidly soft metallic with metallic bits in them and they dust like a bee and uh, they're just garbage, so don't use them. Yes, 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 never go to the dealership for brake jobs. Well, didn't we learn that the $900 way? So anyways, um, groaning noise. So if you remember from the last video I did, there's a groaning noise. Um, that's honestly, I haven't had time to test it to see if it's still there, but they were doing some testing and um, yeah, they weren't able to duplicate it. So it's one of those things. I'm not overly concerned about it because it's been there since 10,000 kilometers. Who cares? And it only happens at certain points anyway. So like, I just, I could care less. And they did the windshield. Now here's, here's one, um, one, one thing why working with a larger dealership, MCL Bank, MCL's the company that owns the dealerships. Um, that includes Jaguar Land Rover in Vancouver. Then we have Kelowna, Langley, and Richmond. And um, Langley has been fantastic. I love those guys. They were great. This is where I bought the car. Yeah, I don't know about their sales department. I didn't have the best experience, unfortunately. But um, their service is fantastic. But what I've noticed about Vancouver is because they're a larger company, they have more reach. And so um, I haven't been in a JLR loaner car for the last couple sessions because they are so big, so massive, but they don't have to put me into a dinky little rental car. They just grab cars from their Acura dealership and send those off to the clients. It's been great. Not great because I'm driving an Acura, those suck, but they're just not for me. Forgive me if you have one. Just, I just, I can't stand them. But yeah, so anyways, I'd rather drive a brand new Acura, like one of them had 30 kilometers on it. I'd rather drive that over the rental car from the company the enterprise that they give you because those rental cars are just garbage. Um, so one advantage dealing with a larger dealership than a smaller one in my experience. Okay, was, going back to that, was the windshield. Um, basically it exploded on me from hitting a rock on the highway. But I was able to have the dealership deal with that with the windshield company and my insurance without having to do a whole separate appointment to get the to go to the glass place, get a car from them. You know, it was just perfect because they were able to do it all in one go, which saved me time, which is the most important thing in life because then you can do things you enjoy doing, not getting your windshield replaced. So like in that in that regards, under warranty, I would definitely go to larger dealerships. They just have more pull for stuff like that. And they have the parts in, in stock, right? Like that's another thing that I've really been impressed with Vancouver. They have the parts in stock um, that I've needed. Where other dealerships, they've had to order them. They don't have them in stock um, and it takes longer. But you know, all in all, um, didn't cost me a penny because all under warranty and um, my insurance covered the windshield and the deductible and all that. So that was all good, but um, <laughs> So they, they did it back into something. And man, these guys were so upfront about it. They're like, I apologize. You're gonna have to bring our, your truck back for a little bit of repainting because we just backed into a little, little whatever. Um, and they just, it was like just a small little scuff, but yeah, it'll just have to be, uh, the lower part of the bumper will have to be repainted. It wasn't a big deal at all. Like I said, they handled it like complete pros, which I appreciate. Um, believe it or not, this is the second time my car has been damaged at a dealership. But both times, you know, Monterey handled it like pros. Vancouver's handled it like pros. Um, so, you know, don't don't feel like you, you know, shouldn't take your car somewhere because you should. I always take videos and pictures of my car before I give it to somebody because of that exact reason. Um, but I'm also paranoid. So that was that. But uh, you know what? I'm now officially into my extended warranty. Um, I'm excited about using it for the first time. Probably just because I'm a car guy and I'm a little weird like that. I like new stuff going onto my car, but you know, the factory warranty from, from Jaguar Lander, I've been happy with it. It's been fantastic. Um, you know, the dealerships here, uh, I haven't had a chance to deal with Richmond yet or Kelowna. I live in Vancouver, BC, if it's not um, obvious, 
But, uh, you know, it, I'll be meeting some peeps up in uh, this weekend from Kelowna, so I'm sure they'll be pretty cool. But, uh, yeah, it's uh, it's been great. But uh, I'm going to do a complete full owner's review of the Hearst 80,000 kilometers. Um, I'll try to do everything for total costs of, like, running costs, maintenance, um, things I broke that I had to pay for, so repairs. Um, you know, I'll try to do all of that. We'll see. But, um yeah. Anyways, let me know what you thought of this video. Sorry if I was rambling a little bit. Um, but uh, what do you think of the setup? I jacked this from Andrew St. Pierre White. I believe that's his name, right? The um, angry South African dude. <laughs> I love his videos. But I saw him talking in front of his classic Range Rover. I was like, jacked. I need that setup. And so here it is. Um, what do you think of this? Share it with him. But... Um, um, I'd really like to go on some adventures with that guy. Like that's just, oh, he's rugged. That's cool. But, uh, yeah. Anyways, guys, Hey, make sure you follow me on Instagram for, um, some really cool stuff we got coming up here. Um, yeah. And if you want more video videos, I'm always open to hear what they are in the comments or hit me up on Instagram. If you are in the market for a Land Rover or Range Rover, yeah, I would love to talk to you because that's just so cool. And I like answering those questions. I've helped a few of you already buy your first Land Rover products. Um, whether you're here in town and I will go out and meet you and do test drives with you because that's just fun or you're somewhere across the world. Um, you know, let's just talk, I guess. So Anyways, I am freezing. I'm going to go inside, eat some dinner, say hi to the, the wife and kids. Till next time, everybody, let me know what you are driving hard. Yeah.